الحمد للہ وصلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد ولا علی و صحبی وسلم اما بعد حب تف اللہ ا کوشچن واز آسک اباؤٹ پرٹیننگ ٹو میو ہیو کنفیوژن ان فک اینڈ دا کوشچنر سیڈ السلام علیکم استاد My friend was mentioning to me that following a madhab is something mandatory. As Muslims, do we have to ascribe to a madhab? And then another question, which is a subsidiary question of this. He said, while studying fiqh, does the beginner start with a madhab or go straight to the books like Umda Tahkam and Baluga Maram? One of my teachers said study fiqh of a madhab. is it the ideal way first and foremost sahabat fillah as the ulama mentioned that <coughs> the ulama of ahlus sunnah or i should say more so especially contemporary salafi ulama that they mention that you are ordered as far as wajib to follow the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that you are ordered and it's an obligation ittiba' ar-rasul to follow the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said uh, first and foremost Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa atiu Allah wa atiu rasul obey Allah and obey his messenger and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said alaykum bi sunnati It's upon you, my sunnah, the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, after mentioning the ummah would divide, Ikramakumullah, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that, about the same sect he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said mention those who are upon my sunnah and the way of my companions so those two a hadith or two hadith and that i at all show that the obligation is to follow the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we are ordered as muslims to follow muhammad ibn abdullah sallallahu alaihi wa ala alihi wasallam and we are not ordered to follow a madhab now with that being the case many of the imams in the religion followed madhabs and in fact as many teachers that i've uh, sat with most and uh, some mashayikh mentioning that you know basically and there's no denying it that here for example in Saudi Arabia those who study in Saudi Arabia who don't already come with a particular madhab that the madhab here the official madhab if you want if you will is hanbali so you will find even in many of the durus majority of the durus although you have other books of 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 the other aimma of uh, imam malik imam shafi'i and uh some probably text and so forth from Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah jami'an that you'll find that the official madhab though is Hanbali and you'll find that the books that are studied here as you mentioned uh, especially Umda Tahkam, Umda Tafiq and other books uh, many of the books are Hanbali but and likewise you'll find Shafi'i and you'll find uh, like Muwatta Imam Malik and so on and so forth so that does not negate al-i'tlaq a madhab but the argument goes that the that which is madhmoom that which is sinful and <clears throat> is to blind follow and to asum 
especially Ta'asub. And so Ta'asub meaning to be blindly prejudiced to a madhab. For example, someone gives you a sound hadith and you say, no, Imam Malik said this, no, Imam Ahmed said this, no, Imam, okay? So you prefer taking given precedence to the statement of that great Imam over Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, which you're ordered to follow. You're not ordered to follow the blind, uh, to, bl to follow the Imams blindly because, as Imam Malik said, Kulu yusibu yukhti illa sahiba hadha khabar, or khabar. As Imam uh, Malik mentioned, that everyone gets something correct and everyone is mistaken and everyone is correct or can be correct except the uh, the inhabitant of the grave and he pointed to the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so letting us know and as one of the Imams said and I believe it was Imam Abu Hanifa it's attributed to him that he said إِذَا صَحَى hadith فَهُوَ مَذْهَبِي if a hadith is found sound then that's my madhab meaning don't just take my call my, my statement and my view on an issue if there's a sound hadith in place and there are so as far as following uh, a medhem and, and, and study fiqh there's the, the second part of what you ask while studying fiqh does the beginner start with a medhem so I asked something similar to this to, uh, to Sheikh uh, Suleiman al-Rahaili, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, many years ago. And I said, you know, what's the difference? Is it, is it better than that? And he, as being the faqih that he is, and he gave such a beautiful answer, he just said, he basically said that, you know, you're asking about something. He said it's the same. And so, because they said the imams, the, the, the books of fiqh, that they... Uh, they are introducing the fiqh from the the perspective of masail, and compared to fiqh sunnah, where you're dealing with the issue uh, as far as uh, dalail, you're looking at the evidence when you say fiqh sunnah, for example, and you're not necessarily studying a madhab, you're studying the text itself, you're studying hadith, and you're studying the ahkam or the rulings from the hadith directly. Whereas a madhab, those imams have already taken a lot of the masail that you're going to deal with in those hadith, and they've dealt with the masail, and sometimes, and often in many certain books, you'll find that they don't mention the evidence, but they've taken the masail from those hadith, you know, from the evidence. So you're studying ahkam in both situations, uh, but you're studying it perhaps from a different perspective. One is studying the issues themselves. One is studying the explanation of the ahadith, and it's coming from that, from the nusus themselves. And with that being the case, what's uh, important is understanding the nasus and those masail to uh, to have an understanding in fact and with regards to whether it's the idea way or not uh, I think the ulama you know, there there's differences because I've heard some ulama mention that uh, some ulama they mention, and I, I noticed this more in Yemen. They uh, uh, really don't study as far as the Salafi uh, schools, if you will, the Salafi maracas. They study more uh, fiqh sunnah. You know, they go to the text. Or they study books that don't have necessarily a madhab like Imam Sa'adi's uh, book, Mukhtasar al-Fiqh, 
I can't think of the name of it, are, uh, are books like uh, Imam Shokani's uh, book, which is also a Muqtasar in fiqh, and, and books like this, which deal with, deal with the Masail, but they're not necessarily coming from a particular madhab. They're going from the point of tarjih of those imams. And here in Saudi Arabia, generally, and in many places, they may study more so from the from the uh, the madhab uh, from books like Umda Umda Tahkam, for example, like Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan, a, a new explanation has just come out of Umda Tahkam uh, or Umda Tafiq. And he is bringing, you know, and that's a book in the uh, Hanbali fiqh, one of the basic muhtasara uh, books in Hanbali fiqh. And so he is exp explaining that book. You know, you'll find that those are generally a lot of the books uh, that the ulama here will explain because that is their general background, but they are not muta'asim and they are not... Um, uh, so they're not blind following and they're not uh, just restricting themselves to the medheb but they're restricting to themselves to what the nasus show to the what they believe is the most sound view coming from the nasus and I hope that that was uh, useful and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct so I said that was incorrect so myself and the shaitan and I would ask that you also look this question up because I know that it's been dealt with so many times by many of our ulama. You'll find a lot of translated uh, material on the internet. I just didn't have time to go into every question that is asked and make a little research or what have you. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with tawfiq.